I finished the second one, which is a mirror image of the first one. They go together something like this. The needles come together at some small area here in this orientation. On to the next assembly. So next on the list is this sub-assembly. It's the main driving block, the main slider block assembly. That's this block, um, like so. Um, it involves uh, six mini bearings. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight mini bearings and some clamping blocks for the timing belt. So let's get started. Okay. So that concludes this sub assembly, which will slide across the rails here. Hopefully, someday, like so. So, on to the next sub assembly. Okay, the correct way up is this T-bar horizontally with the holes pointing downward, but then this has to be flipped 180 degrees. So, okay, now flip it around, slide it over again. And now we should be good. There are some additional holes, so these holes should line up, hopefully. Uh, I'm sorry, these three holes should line up, which they do. Uh, that's a good fit. I'm first gonna fix this mounting plate to the main frame because I still have to pre drill some holes. So, this is the main uh, holder for the entire. Uh, tabletop business end and this plate this plate should go on top right here in the exact location I have marked on a drawing that I will be printing now and there's a second plate that goes on the bottom right here the holes are already marked they appear to be lining up with the markings very nicely. So this view is this plate. The top plate right here, that's this one, should be 10 from the side and 3 down from the back edge. 10 and 3. Also 10 from the other side. And 3 from the back edge. 3. Oh, 
Okay, we should do it. So that means this plate should be located about here. Okay, it's clear enough. I centered the three holes at the top and I centered these three holes. Okay, so I've got the locations. I'm gonna drill the holes on the drill press. Okay, so I'll drill the holes and I'll be back. Okay, there we go. Okay, we're done here. That should do. Good. So next up, I'm going to uh, mount this subassembly, like so. Okay, into the hole. That's all tight enough. Okay. Yeah, now I'm gonna look for those weights because as soon as I'm going to add those brackets right here, it's gonna tip over and that's no good. I unscrewed it at the bottom here and just rotated the bottom plate by 180 degrees, screwed the screws back in, so it should be good. These go on next, so exciting. So now according to drawing, this bolt goes into the lower slot and this upper bolt goes into one of these holes. So the washer goes on. And at the bottom, the same. One washer. And one nut. So I tightened the nuts and it's on there. Okay, I guess. Okay, so first one is in. <laughs> okay, so somehow I again managed to mess up. So this black block should go in front of this T bar. That means that uh, this bolt should point the other way. Making drawings is easy, reading them, wow, that's hard. I'm gonna change that over real quick. Okay, now it should be ready to go on. This one around here. The washer from the back. And the nut. Okay. And the bottom. 
into the groove. No washer from the back. And the nuts. So there you go. That's the entire monstrosity. This time I read the drawing right, but the drawing was wrong. To make it clear, the way this timing belt is supposed to be mounted is from this point with the clamping plate around this small pulley downward to this other pulley up around this one and then a mirror image on this side around this pulley around this one and another clamp plate the timing belt should be clamped to this block here with this plate which means this plate is on the wrong side and that is what was wrong on my drawing. So now I need to disassemble both of these assemblies and mount this plate on the other side. So this is tedious. I'll be back in a minute. I was reading my drawing right, but the drawing itself was wrong this small clamping plate to clamp down the timing belt actually was on the other side so I had that wrong and on that side as well I corrected my drawing already I also solved some clearance issues this had some play and it was able to tilt back and forth that play has gone now so they're both uh, nice and tight on top here it's still a bit wobbly and loose maybe I'll fix that later I'll uh, first start using it and then go from there. So next up is fitting the timing belt. Finally, well yeah, let's do that first. I also should mention that if I put the needles on here, one here, loosely, and one there, you can see that they don't really come together in one point. So they need to come together slightly, which means I need to shift these two bolts a bit outward. So I'll do that next. This can't really move inward outward because it's clamped down right here. So now they're fairly close. I don't want them too close together. Because then, as I'm cleaning parts and this needle pumps out the fluid, this one would suck it right back up. That's no good. So that's why I want some distance between those two tips. Okay. With that all in place, I think I can try threading the timing belt. Okay, I'll start on this end right here. Thread it, thread it through here. The belt is tightened down, it's a bit loose to couple these slider blocks to the timing belt. I need to determine the right position. I moved the leftmost syringe to its full extension and the other one I pushed it uh, the entire way in. I took my calipers, I measured the distance here which is about three and a half. The distance on this side which is about 78 and a half. It leaves a stroke of about 75 millimeters. And then finally I marked the center of this 
plywood base in the center of the top sliding block. That's that white dot right there. And with the stroke being 75 millimeters and this plunger fully down, that means that this block should be out of center by half of that stroke length. So hold it next to the center marking on the plywood base about there. It's not super critical. The stroke length should be enough to clear all the holes and everything. I can now tighten down both those clamping plates. So that's next. Okay, so uh, the timing belt is mounted. I tightened it down some more. Still not tight enough, but uh, I think it should work. So by moving this sliding block back and forth, those plunges move in opposite directions with the, uh, the right stroke. Now I'm going to mount the bottom cables, this being one of them, the outer one. This is the inner cable. First I'll have to cut this to length. And now it fits. Yeah, that's the end. And there it is. I finished both bottom cables with the fixed ends. And both of those end pieces onto the cables to prevent the cables from slipping inside. So now I'm going to mount these ends to the top slider block right here. For that I made some small aluminium pipes. They go on like this, slide into here, then a quarter of a turn. I'll mount the first of these cables now. I guess I'll start on this side. Okay. So it should fit something like, like this. The second block slides over and this cable end is still free to move. The block is uh, clamped down, the cable is still free to move. And now comes the time to install a small aluminium cylinder. Let me see. Now this should slide in from the bottom all the way through. Then I think it's in there. Now let's slide this over. Let's fix the other side. Make sure. Okay. So the cables are in. As you can see, I need to tighten everything up, clean something up, and then I'll move to the pedal assembly. I put the main slider block to one side, to the one extreme, and measured the cable length I would need. And I determined that I had about 100 millimeters too much of the outer bottom. So I shortened it by that much. I clamped it down already, so this is finished and fixed. Now I need to do the same for the second bottom cable. Okay, this is gonna take like 20 minutes or half an hour. So, 
let's try this contraption. Tilt it up. Let's reposition the camera. Okay, first part, here we go. a lot of air. Well the needles seem to be on there securely so from the squeaking the jets of acetone are really powerful so I think it's not very elegant but it is very efficient so last part Let's empty the syringes. Let's close this up. As it don't be gone. And now the last cleaning step using water. And the tweezers. Also, I think this one is clean. Wow. Okay, I'm done cleaning.